Hallelujah. 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 Um, my name is uh, Marcus Zinsky. I'm licensed as a minister of the gospel uh, through the church of prison ministry. And uh, um, I, I have like eight pages of notes to go through. And what often happens is I'll write them out and then the Lord will give me something completely different to, uh, to say, praise God. Uh, we serve an awesome God. Yes. And uh, let his uh, praise always be upon our lips. Yes. And uh, one thing that the Lord has, that, that's such a true statement. Uh, the, the Lord, uh, ever since I was uh, born again, and though I stumbled, we were reading this book about uh, how this, uh, in the Sunday school this morning, about how this man would not lift up a person who hadn't stumbled. And that's certainly a part of, of my story. But uh, our God is faithful, uh, even when we're not. And, uh, and so I, I praise God for that. And uh, so I'm just going to say, uh, you know, hallelujah, Christ is risen. Yes. Christ Amen. is risen indeed. Yes. And, and one of the things that the Lord has, been, has had on my heart is, is to make that understandable to people. You know, there's different languages that we can say, uh, Christos Voskres, that's Christ has risen in Ukrainian and Russian. It's the same, Christos Voskres. We can say, I don't know if I'm going to get this one right, Christa Javita Hudavhayo, that's Christ has risen in Nepali. We can say, Christus is auferstanden, that's Christ has risen in German. Is La I don't know if my French pronunciation is good here. La Christ est ressuscité. That's Christ has risen in French. And I learned this one yesterday uh, from a, a man I know from the Congo. He said, Yezu Fulu Kiri, which means that's a, a, a Kiambe, which is a language spoken in the Congo. And that means Christ is risen in this language that is spoken all the way over in the Congo in Africa. Hallelujah. And, uh, and but the, the main thing is that the gospel is a universal language, even though my last name, Szynski, spelled S-Z-C-Z-E-C-I-N-S-K-I, -E I, I think is uh, uh, proof of the confusion of the tongues at the Tower of Babel. Polish is proof of that, I think. Uh, but, uh, 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 but, but the gospel, the message of the gospel, it, it's a universal language. That, that's what the, and, and, and it's such a universal language, we're not to ever be ashamed of it. The Apostle Paul says in Romans chapter 1, verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For, it, for in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith that is as written, but the righteous man shall live by faith. So praise God, hallelujah. Praise God. Um, and so uh, what I was going to share about was, um, was how the Lord's been working the last few years. The, the Lord uh, had me connected here with my brothers and sisters a few years back. And I, and I know a few of you uh, from uh, because uh, God connected us, mm -hmm. right? Gazebo Outreach and uh, Deliverance. Right. Uh, I don't know, was that 2018 or 2019, the Lord, uh, the Lord sent me free to, to come uh, that summer because I had been, I had always wanted to come to that group, and, um, but I could never do it because of my work schedule, and somebody prayed for provision for me, a prophet, and he said, he prayed for provision, and what happened, uh, uh, like, two, that was a Tuesday, <laughs> and like, it was a two or three days later, the boss comes in, Marcus, I'm sorry, i got to lay you off. So, praise God. And so I had, that wasn't my uh, definition of provision, but it was this freedom. We have this wonderful verse here, where the, sport, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, is there is freedom. And all of a sudden, the Lord set me free and uh, to go where the spirit led. I was, I was no longer confined by sort of the secular work schedule when I went to working on straight commission, right? And, uh, and, and, and that allowed me and my son Sebastian uh, to come visit Gazebo Outreach and Deliverance in Morrisville for that summer. Praise God. So 
and, and so fast forward past that um, to, uh, uh, to, to March of uh, 2020, okay? And let me just actually, I'll put up a, a picture here, maybe. <coughs> the last time I was here, I saw the document camera. Let's see it. So that's just a, a, a snapshot, I don't know how all that shows up, but a, a few of us uh, at the, the Gazebo Outreach and uh, Deliverance from, uh, uh, Shanice, was that 2018 or 2019? 2018. 2018, praise God, I can't believe it's been that long. But, uh, and so the Lord connected me uh, with my brothers and sisters here and a few others uh, in Morrisville. I had always wanted to come, and actually I had gotten connected with people here through the Church of Prison Ministry. Uh, uh, that I, but anyway, uh, to stay on track, um, it was March of 2020, right? And everything, you know, COVID hit, everything was shutting down. Uh, you know, uh, at the beginning of March of 2020, like most of us were still working, most of us were st still worshiping the Lord in person, but then COVID hit. And, um, and it wasn't just COVID at that time. It was, it, it, there was a variety of things. And uh, sometimes we forget that. I know I, if I don't really think intently about it, I just think it was COVID. But there, there were riots across the U.S. Cities were burning. People were hitting each other. And people were dying. And, um, and I had been part of the church at prison team. I was a member of the team serving every other Sunday inside the Northwest State Correctional Facility uh, as part of the team. And the Lord had me doing that for several years. Um, there's a long story to that, but I'm not going to get into that because I, I, I have the gift of making short stories long. So, <laughs> and I'm going to try to keep it somewhat shorter. <laughs> Praise God. Um, it's true. <laughs> but, uh, and so, so very beginning of March, things were still open. But by the second Sunday in March of 2020, the prisons were under lockdown. Um, you know, at, at that point, right in the middle of March, uh, many of the churches stopped meeting in person. It was like two weeks to, whatever that, that phrase was, two weeks to, 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 to stop the curve, whatever, to, whatever the phrase was. Businesses shut down in person like because they weren't set up to work remotely. Um, but, but this is just it. Uh, it wasn't just the businesses shut down. The churches stopped meeting in person. And we are called to fellowship together. Um, and recovery groups stopped meeting it just seemed like everything just came to a screeching halt. The world as we know it seemed to be going there. There was the COVID, there were these riots. Uh, the, uh, the COVID was a plague, right? And and because we didn't know much about it at the time. And um, the one thing that didn't shut down at that time, everything else shut down, but the flow of drugs did not. And people that I knew through the prison ministry People who had been out of prison for a couple of years, because oftentimes one of the hardest times when somebody is transitioning from being incarcerated to being out on the streets is if they've been incarcerated for a certain amount of time, they get institutionalized, and, and, and it's that transition time from when they first get out till a, till a couple of years after. And people that I knew that were, they were doing okay. You know, they weren't perfect, but, but they were doing mostly okay. You know, they, you know, they had been working, uh, they had uh, church and, and the support groups behind them. But when, they, when that stopped, when they fell out of fellowship, and we're called to be a fellowship with each other. We're not called to be Christians on our own. We're called to be part of the body of Christ. But when, that, when COVID came and all these things just, just worked, worked against people coming together, and that wasn't of the Lord, um, many of these people that we knew, unfortunately, they not only relapsed, they overdosed and died. Um, and it was, and so that's just it. We found out, and, and, and I, uh, the Pastor Diane, I, my understanding is she passed from COVID and my sincere uh, condolences for that. But we found out that there was more than one way to die from COVID because we saw again and again people dying from drug overdoses because they had been isolated. Their support groups, their uh, their, their churches weren't meeting, 
And when they fell out of fellowship with their support groups, they were easy pickings, right? Um, and so these people, if they had been in fellowship, they may not have succumbed to the schemes of the devil, because that, I mean, that's obviously from the devil, that, because Jesus tells us in John 10, 10, the thief comes only to steal, steal, kill, and destroy, right? And, and these people, they were doing okay. Um, and uh, up until that point in time. And the other thing about that, um, we were talking about, uh, what is it, the, what's, the, what's the name of that book? The uh, Awe of God um, uh, this morning, which is awesome. But, but there was a pervasive spirit of fear. I'm 53 years old. I guess it was 50 back, back then. Um, but there was a spirit of fear, like what, a small S on that spirit. There was a spirit of fear. It was so thick. I don't know if anybody remembers that. Because of that unknown that was going on, it, it, was, it was a spirit of fear. It was so thick you could slice it with a knife. And, and that type of fear we know is not of the Lord. So 1 John 4.18 says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear, because fear involves punishment. The one who fears has not been perfected in love. And what does the next verse say? We love because he first loved us. And so that's going to tie in what happened next. Uh, the ministry team of the church at prison serving the incarcerated of Vermont for for so many years, just uninterrupted. There's just the, the ministry team of the church at prison for, for the first time, in my recollection, um, went dormant for the first time. The prisons were under lockdown. The, actually, the inmates even uh, were locked in their cells. Meals were brought to them, and our ministry the, the ministry team of the church at prison was locked out. And, um, and we didn't know at the time what was going on. And so all these people who had been active going inside the prisons, serving the Lord, and, and who had also been active out on the streets, all of a sudden, just things just stopped there as well. Um, and, but we couldn't remain so, um, because as 1 John 4, 19 says, we love because he first loved us. So uh, members of the ministry team, uh, we encountered this dormancy, but it wasn't it may have looked like we were dormant, but we weren't. We were in the word. We were in prayer like, like never before because um, we had that time because we were always, I, I know in my own life, I was a, 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 a human doing rather than a human being because I was always doing this, always doing that, always doing this, always doing that. And so when everything came to that screeching halt, right, the Bible says, be still and know that I am God, right? He, he will be exalted among the nations. And so we were, so for that first time in a long time, I just got to go to my knees in prayer and, uh, and just pray and be in the Word, and to be in the Word for the sake of being in the Word, to get to know Him better, right? And, uh, and what, what the Lord spoke into my life uh, uh, through uh, John chapter 12, verse uh, 24, Jesus says, Truly, truly, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a seed, but if it dies, it bears much fruit. And so what the Lord was telling me is that though things stopped, right, and it appeared that things had died, it had just really gone dormant like a seed, and the Lord was pouring his Holy Spirit in to start something new. He said, behold, I do a new thing, a new thing and, and it was going to bear much fruit. I didn't know what the Lord was doing, but but... But this is what happened. So we were just like that kernel of wheat falling to the ground. We were dormant for a period. And as I said, the study and prayer the Lord had us in was very intense. And, and this is what the Lord had us doing. He said, according to James 4.10, humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. So we went from a time of being in prayer, being in worship, being in the word, literally on, on, on my hands and knees um, for hours because... That's all there was. But the whole world had stopped. But the thing is, God had not. Because Jesus is alive, Jesus lives, and Christ has risen, and God's perfect love drove out fear in my life, including the fear of COVID. And so out of that time in deep prayer and in the word, 
a fellowship was born. The kernel that had fallen to the ground, God has had poured his spirit into to come alongside ex-inmates to meet every week in person starting in the summer of 2020 at a time when many things were locked down, where people weren't meeting together in person because we knew that there was just no substitute for being in fellowship with one another. And so the, the, the Lord brought a small group of people together and we feared God, but we didn't fear COVID, knowing that we could get COVID, but we knew Jesus. So even if we did and we died from it, so be it, all glory to God, because we knew where we were going. So, so this small group of people that the Lord brought together, we had all served in the prison ministry in one capacity or another before COVID. And I've never served time in prison myself, although that was on the, I was going on that path, that's another story. Uh, but others in the group had actually served time. Um, and we started meeting outside, we were meeting outside every Tuesday morning. Um, and we, we, we met where we could find a place that would welcome us. And, uh, and early on we prayed about the name of the group and the Lord led us to Psalm 107, 14, which is, he brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and broke away their chains. Because each of us in that core group that the Lord had brought together had come to Christ, had been set free, had been out, led out of darkness, and our chains had been broken away. Hallelujah. We knew firsthand we knew firsthand, Romans 6, 23, that the wages of sin is death. But we also knew the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And this is something that each of us in the group was uniquely equipped to share with others. <laughs> because you know Ephesians 2, 10. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for water. Because you know the living water, hallelujah. Because you know, Ephesians 2.10 says, for we are God's workmanship. So who do we belong to? We're God's workmanship. We're God's workmanship. That's a we, just so you know. I'm not just saying, so not just we in our group, but that's for everybody here. We are God's workmanship, right? Created in Christ Jesus. We're created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Or as one translation would say, as our way of life. God prepared and advanced good works for us to do as our way of life. And because we have seen so many compromise their faith, um, we wanted to be, we have that theme verse. He led them out of darkness and the shadow of death and broke away their chains. We wanted to, there to be absolutely no question whatsoever that it was Jesus Christ who led us out of darkness. And so we included John 14, 6 sort of as a subverse where it says, Jesus answered, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. There is no other way, there is no other name under heaven given unto men by which we must be saved. And we wanted that to be absolutely clear because we would never compromise on that. And so with that, Breaking Chains Christian Fellowship was born as an affiliate ministry of the church at prison. And we started meeting together um, every week in prayer and Bible study, uh, at first outside, moving inside. I'm going to show you a picture here, slightly <laughs> off topic, but... But the Lord started to call us to do things. Uh, here, Hector, if you want to. Here's a, a picture for you. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, so we were meeting together, and the Lord was working in and through this group. And I didn't include this picture so much in my notes in the message. But the Lord had us out and about. And, um, uh, and, uh, and so, so I'm just going to say, during that time, there were still COVID lockdowns and strife within our country. 
And the Lord had me reading uh, Numbers 21, 4 through 9. Actually, I'm going to bring up my handy handy uh, sign here. Right? Praise God. Hallelujah. So, so the Lord had me reading uh, Numbers uh, 21, 4 through 9, which Jesus references in John 3, 14. And the Lord impressed upon me that for everything that was going on, all we really needed to do was to look to Jesus and be healed. And that's what Jesus says. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. Yeah. Right? And so the Lord had me, so, so that's Jesus in John 3, 14, 15, right before John 3, 16, right? And and I had to like look up, and I, I, I had to look up this cross-reference. What was Jesus talking about? Um, and he was talking about, in the book of Numbers, in chapters 21, 4 through 9, Moses was leading the Israelites through the desert, and the Bible said, on, on this, what should have been a short journey, <coughs> took a lot longer, right? And, and what journey, what sort of journey are we on? What, what journey that should have been short, but because of our sin, ended up taking a whole lot longer. So, so, so the people were on the journey, even though, even though the people had rebelled, God was still leading them because he is faithful, even when we're not. But then it says they grew impatient with God. Like, I, I don't know about God, but I, like, if I were God, but I'm not. <laughs> like, when they, that's the first thing that they grew impatient with. Um, they grew impatient with God. You don't really want to grow impatient with God. <laughs> And then it says, they grew impatient with Moses. And the last draw, it says that they complained about their food. Uh, the, the Bible says in Numbers 21, verse 5, they complained, they said, we don't have any food, <clears throat> and the food we have doesn't taste any good. <laughs> and uh, you can think of maybe your kid, if you have kids, your kids behind the table, I don't like this. Uh, this doesn't taste any good. You know, we really need to be thankful for what we're given. God was providing for all their needs, and they grew impatient, and they weren't grateful for it. And the Lord, the Bible says the Lord sent venomous snakes among the people, and many of the people were bitten and died. And so the people came to Moses because what, what I, I have to think, I don't know if this is a, a, a proven fact, but it seems to me the number one reason when, when people repent is because they faced a consequence for their sin, right? And so the people were dying for their sin. They, the Bible says the wages of sin is death, right? And so the people faced a consequence for their sin. They were getting bitten by these snakes. They were dying. And they went up to Moses and they said, Moses, we have sinned. And they pleaded with Moses to intercede for them. And the Lord could have just turned around and healed them. But what the Lord did is he told Moses to take or make a fiery or bronze or shiny serpent. There's different translations for that word. But the long and short of it is it was easy to see to place it on a staff. And all that the people had to do who had been bitten, who were gonna who were gonna die, they were gonna die. They'd been bitten, right? And poison had been injected to them, and they were gonna die. I don't know if it was gonna be five minutes, ten minutes, twenty minutes, a half an hour, hours. It doesn't say, but they were gonna die very shortly. They'd been bitten by a poisonous snake. But because of God's great love for them, they weren't consumed. And 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 what God told Moses, all that the people needed to do was to look at that bronze serpent, and they would live. And this ties right into Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. For it is by grace we are saved through faith, not of ourselves, not by works, so that no one can boast. I can just imagine people in that day and time going up to, it's like, hey, I've been bitten by a snake. And Moses is like, hey, you see, there's this bronze staff over there. Maybe they're talking to a friend. But I, I've just been bitten by this snake. I'm going to die like in 20 minutes. It's like, yeah, hey, Moses was talking with God for us, and God made a way for us to be saved. And he said, all we have to do is look at that bronze serpent on that stick over there. And I can just see people, the Bible doesn't say this, but knowing people as I do, uh, uh, I can just see people say, nah, how on earth is that even going to save me? What sense does that make to look 
at that broad serpent. That's not going to say, I've just been bitten by a snake. I need to like dig out the, the poison from my veins. It's like coursing through me. How is that even going to possibly save me? It was going to save them because God said so. So, that kind of go right to, so, so here's this, this wonderful message, uh, John 3, 14, 15. And, uh, and so, the Lord put on my heart to have a large cross made, because he said, just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. That all who believe may have eternal life, the same as Moses lifted the serpent in the desert, all the people in the desert had to do to live is to look at the broad serpent. And so the Lord put on my heart or asked, was just putting to me as a question. And I asked myself, so did that mean that at that time, in March of 2020 and going into the spring a little bit, did that mean that all the people needed to do was to look to Jesus and be saved? That's what he says. And so the Lord provided... An eight-foot-high cross. Um, I've been given some small crosses to share Jesus, to, to share Jesus with, uh, to, to share with people like this. But what the Lord was really putting on my heart was to have something like, Je like what Jesus was talking about, something like what Moses had, so that it would be easy to see. And, and I was like searching all over, who's going to make me? I'm, I'm not particularly handy when it comes to woodworking. Uh, and I had these little crosses, and, and the Lord worked it out so that um, uh, the, I didn't know who to ask. And then it's like, oh, how about the guy that made these little crosses, uh, who served 20 years in prison, um, who came to Christ um, while he was in prison, and all I had to do was ask him. And he, he made, he's made a few of these larger crosses. And uh, so, uh, uh, and so that cross was made, and I'm just going to, and the Lord used that cross uh, in multiple ways, not just in Burlington. Um, uh, here, one of the first public showings of this cross, I think that was in uh, January of uh, 2021, right? That was the inauguration. And if you remember, there were all these threats to all the state capitals across the country. Um, I don't know if you remember that, but you know, the threats were taken seriously. And if you look in the background of that picture, kind of hard to see here, but when we arrived there, there were these armed people. I thought they were soldiers, but what they were, they were Vermont State Police in full tactical combat gear carrying loaded assault rifles guarding our state capitol. And then the Lord, that was one of the first places the Lord um, had me and a few others go uh, to pray for our state, to pray for our nation. Because remember, we feared God, we didn't fear COVID, and we came there to, to, to pray, to, to pray for our nation and our state, right there under the watchful eyes of some uh, armed uh, state police. And, uh, and so at that point, the Lord had us start to go public with this message of the cross. And this is all going to tie in, I hope. <laughs> and it, it's funny how the Lord works things out. I think i got to work on my timing here. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, but Jesus says in Matthew 10, 32, If you confess me before men, I will confess you before men my Father in heaven. And if you think about that, right, so if you're confessing, you go, if you confess me before men and women, right, we'll say, if you confess me in public, he says, I'm going to confess you before my Father in heaven. So what does that mean? That means if you're, if you're actually declaring your faith in Jesus Christ publicly, they're having a conversation in heaven about you. Think about it. That's what it says. And so the Lord was just putting on my heart to go out publicly with that cross. And, and the Lord started to do amazing things, just even from the get-go. One, one of the first places he had me go was to Williston, the I-89 2A uh, on-ramp, off-ramp, right there in Williston, if you know that. 
And he just told me to go. He put it on my heart. I had to go. I had to be obedient to God. And just to go stand by the <clears throat> on-ramp and off-ramp with the cross as people were going to work. And it's like, okay, God. And, and what I, I didn't quite know how God was working, but uh, sort of through a friend of a friend, what I heard uh, a couple weeks later is that somebody saw that cross and, and that person's life was transformed because of that. And, and so it was just, the God, God started to just do amazing things because there's this wonderful message here, 1 Corinthians 1.18. The message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it's the power of God. And God just used simply putting the cross out, right, to lift up the name of Jesus Christ, to start to transform people's lives. And it was a supernatural act of God because that cross up there, that's just a couple pieces of wood hooked together, but it's the message that it carries. And it started, just God used that to reach more and more people. So back on track to our meeting, praise God, hallelujah. Um, our, our weekly Breaking Chains Christian Fellowship meeting was meeting in a nice, we had gone inside for the winter, a little cold. <coughs> there was a church that had opened its doors to us. Great. Thank you, Jesus, for that church. Um, and our group was doing a study, Life's Healing Choices, which is not kind of a precursor to uh, celebrate recovery. And um, you know, you know, the Lord was just showing favor to our group. One, a member of our group who had questions about it, he actually called Saddleback Church and got through to Pastor Rick Warren. Like, who, who, who gets through to, like, the pastor of a mega church with tens of thousands of members, but uh, our brother in the Lord Elvin got through. And, uh, and we, we met there, we finished that study, but we just felt the Lord had, had something more uh, for us to do. And, um, and we were getting too comfortable in our chairs, right? Because we, we did this study, we were watching this video, and we, we, we were coming alongside people. We were doing what we called to do for that season, but we had these nice cushy chairs. It was, not, it was just... It was just too cushy. <laughs> we're going too comfortable with where we were at. And my, my brother in the Lord, at, uh, in whose home church we were meeting, yeah, he said, and uh, in May of that year, um, we're leaving the building. We're going out to meet at Battery Park. So, because he knew we were getting too comfortable. And uh, <coughs> how it worked was we met for a brief study outside um, at Battery Park. It was May, uh, early May, and we continued to meet every Tuesday morning, and it was May of, 20, May of 2021, and so we'd meet to pray, to have a brief message, and then we would just go out to the people in the park and around there uh, to share the gospel. And I, I had the cross with me, I was the only one carrying the cross, because <laughs> I'm not ashamed of the gospel. And, and we, got, we, were, we got to know all these different people from all over the world, right there in Battery Park. There were people from Nepal, people from this, uh, Somalia, people from many different African countries, and all of, us, all of a sudden, our group engaged people in the name of Jesus, and in Burlington, and we, we followed Jesus' words in Matthew 28, 28, and all of a sudden, we, we were sharing the gospel and making disciples of all nations because instead of us going to the nations, the nations had come to us. And, and so we continued to see the Lord work miracles. And um, let me try to fast forward a little bit here. Here's a picture of Brother Hector. You can, yeah. I just got it. Okay. So we continued to see the Lord work miracles. And we, we were sharing the gospel with people. We were walking with people who had come out of prison. And, and, and as part of sharing the gospel with some of the people downtown, um, we encountered these, this group of young, young men, and a, a woman or two, uh, who were from Nepal. They were kind of like street people. Sometimes they were sleeping out in the park. Um, and, uh, uh, but we got to know them. And uh, I probably even have a few pictures of them. But we ordered in Nepali Bibles. So that, and we even ordered in a Nepali English parallel Bible 
and uh, for the people in downtown Burlington that, that we had come into contact with. And one of the things that happened, I was, at this point I was attending a Thursday evening Bible study fellowship dinner in Underhill, Vermont. You guys know where Underhill is. And I don't think anybody, I don't, at, at this particular house, it was a, a person's house, Mike, Mike and Emily Diffenderfer, they were hosting this weekly study. There'd never, ever, ever, ever been anybody from Nepal at that study. And, uh, and there just happened to be uh, this, uh, this man, uh, his wife and sister, that showed up one Thursday evening, uh, just kind of out of the blue. And, and we were sitting down after our dinner in fellowship, and we were in the Word, and they were just struggling with their English. And I'm like, wait a minute. I have these Nepali Bibles in my car. What are the chances that, do any of you carry Nepali Bibles in your car, just like randomly? Like, I don't carry Nepali Bibles randomly. One thing to, to encounter the people from Nepal in downtown Burlington, it was a whole other thing in a private residence to encounter this Nepali family. They, they had some kids with them too. Uh, just, and I had Nepali Bibles in my car. And for the first time ever, they got to see the Word of God in their native language, and we had this Nepali English parallel Bible, so they could read the Bible, and their kids who understood English much better than them, they could read it together, right? And there was this, this great look of joy. I don't know about you, but that was a miracle of God, because there's no way that I could have planned that. that that's God preparing good works in advance for us to do. So I'm just like sharing that, that we just saw God working in and through what we were doing, not just downtown in Burlington, but everywhere we were going as our way of life. And uh, so uh, I, let me just uh, try to skip forward here a little bit. Praise God. Hallelujah. I don't know how much time I have. But uh, so uh, as I mentioned, I had uh, come to Morrisville in 2018 uh, to this Bible study and fellowship. Um, and then I had also gone to this study in, in Underhill, and one of the things that they shared in common was that after the study, or part of the, at least part of the study, is that people were not just studying the Word and fellowshipping, they're actually breaking bread together. And, um, and, so the, and, and so I was paying attention to Acts 2, 42, 43. It was like right before, Acts, Acts chapter 2, we all know that the Holy Spirit was given, all these people... The uh, believe they were 3,000 people baptized, and then the very next verse says, They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. So I'm like, Wait a minute, there's this breaking. So, so the apostles' teaching that's Bible study, right? To the fellowship, they're hanging out with each other, to the breaking of bread, they're eating together, and the prayer. And the one thing that we were missing in our Tuesday morning outreach is we weren't breaking bread together um, and and so verse 43 I, I this came to mind because I at, at the group that met in Morrisville the group that met in Underhill God was working signs and wonders and I'm like maybe there's something to this he did I don't understand why but and I don't have to understand why but I'm like maybe we should actually <laughs> start to introduce breaking bread with the people with, uh, with whom we're ministering, to whom we've been called to minister. And so we, uh, we did that. On Tuesday mornings, we started serving breakfast in downtown Burlington in the band shell at Battery Park. And God just started to do amazing, 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 amazing things. And uh, there's just a, just going to show you a few pictures. I could go into long stories, but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh, but we just started to see God do amazing things by uh, people started to come and they not just they, they didn't just come to get some food. What ended up happening is they started to sit down with us. They they sat down on the concrete steps of the band shell at at Battery Park, and the Lord had me sit down with them. And um, there's a little bit I want to just share this this. Uh, story here um, that the Lord would also have me and others out sharing Jesus 
and I was at Battery Park on a Sunday afternoon reading the Bible uh, with a man from Nepal. His name was Debbie. And I, we were just sitting there Sunday afternoon. There was somebody along the side of the <coughs> van shelf that had been sleeping there, a woman. But we were ways, a long ways away from her. We were just reading quietly. Um, and, uh, uh, and I was just uh, trying to answer some questions he had. And we, were, we weren't bothering anybody. But what we started to hear <coughs> was this cursing from, I'm like, what, what is that noise going on? And, um, and, and that woman that was, I didn't even, she was in a sleeping bag, I didn't know who it was, but it turned out to be a woman, and this cursing grew louder and louder, and, all, and because apparently she had noticed we were reading the Bible. We were just like reading you know, to each other. We were, you know, <laughs> we were just reading to each other very softly. I don't know how she heard it, but she did. And it, it kind of, there was something going on with her. And all of a sudden she blurted out, there's no God in this park. Otherwise, and, and she said something horrible had happened to her, so I'm not going to share that. But, but the main thing, she said there's no God in this park. Otherwise, this horrible thing wouldn't have happened to her. And then she went off, cussing and cursing, and, uh, and that was a Sunday afternoon. And the Lord had our group there, there just a, you know, a couple days later on a Tuesday morning. And, uh, and sure enough, that same woman was there. And we had the privilege to serve her breakfast. And you know, she was basically sleeping there. But again, the Lord just had me sit down and, and not to preach at her, just to sit down and listen and to see what she had to say. And, uh, and she... Uh, actually, by the end of that time, she apologized for some of what she had said. But over the period of the next few weeks, um, the Lord had me not only encounter her. He had me encounter her stepfather in person. He had me talk on the phone with her mother. I didn't even know how this happened. I just did. <laughs> and, uh, and, and he had me encounter her again at the band show one evening. There were a bunch of people there. Um, and, uh, and she motioned to me, and, and she just collapsed. She repented and collapsed in tears right then and there on the spot. And, uh, and it turns out she had known Jesus, and she had fallen away, and she had gone through a rough spot in her life, and uh, her life had fallen apart. Um, and uh, we need to listen. We can't just be condemning people who are out there on the streets and she turned back to the Lord and uh, a short time later she was off the street she had a place to go she could go back to her mother and her stepfather and praise God I haven't seen her again she hasn't been back on the streets and you see uh, there is a God and she, she said at first there's no God in that park but you see there is a God in that park and his name is Jesus, okay? And so in our ministry, uh, Pastor Jeremy, how much time do I have? As the Lord would lead, as much as you need. Okay, praise God. As much as he needs. Uh, hallelujah. <laughs> For the Spirit, our God is a God of order, not of chaos. So, so we, we continue to see the Lord working in power, just doing things like we were doing what we were called to do, and the Lord would just do the rest. And, and the Lord blessed us because we were, we were paying out of pocket uh, for that breakfast that we served at first. <laughs> Food cost a little less back then. Uh, a dozen eggs were $1.99 a dozen, praise God. But we were just called to share because our lives were completely given up. It didn't, it didn't matter the cost because we were just glad to be able to do it. And it reached even more people for Jesus. And, um, and in September of 2021, so about a month, month and a half after we started to, to do the food, the Lord blessed us and uh, New Moon Catering, 150 Cherry Street in downtown Burlington. Some of you might have heard of 150 Cherry um, and maybe, but the, there's the, the, the Beer family uh, uh, and, uh, and, and they, they actually live in Israel, but uh, we want to bless Israel, praise God. And, uh, and, and they, 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 they heard about what we were doing and um, the pastor at my home church had let them know 
and they came alongside us and they started to bless us with the breakfast. So we were no longer on the hook for, you know, cooking up all these eggs and bacon and pancakes and milk, juice and coffee. They started to provide that for us. So the Lord was blessing us through that and, and, they, and, and, and they were able to provide even more and it was professionally done. But <laughs> we saw the Lord working and it started to get cold. And so I want to bring you uh, hopefully into the, into the current, what, uh, where we're at with our, our, our study. We were, we were meeting out on the streets. We were meeting in the park every Tuesday. We were, the Lord had us downtown at different uh, days <laughs> and times. And uh, uh, literally, um, uh, rain, sun, snow, heat, cold, we're in the midst of gunfire. Um, that's where the Lord had me in the cross, right? Because the, the healthy don't need a doctor, it's the sick, right? That's what, the, that's what Jesus says. Um, and, and so he had us out there in the midst of things declaring the gospel. But for our weekly Tuesday morning group, um, you know, it's Vermont. It, you know, come November, the temperature goes down. We, we met outside um, every Tuesday through the end of November 21. Um, and then we moved inside um, and, and the, uh, the, the Turning Point Center, which is a recovery uh, place. There's like AA and NA meetings. Praise be to God, the Lord showed us favor and they opened our doors to host our meeting because you see we're all in recovery from sin whether you know, whether it's from alcohol or from drugs or other sin God is reconciling the world to himself through Jesus Christ we're all in recovery from sin and so the Lord opened up the doors for us to start to meet there and uh, let's see if I might even have a little picture of us meeting it started off you know, small. And this is purposely kind of blurry on the pictures. There's one table there, and uh, so we don't really want to show faces if we can help it. And uh, uh, but uh, it, it started off small, but the Lord continued to bless it. And and what happened is we we, you know, we had been sharing the gospel with people, you know, sharing the word. You know, handing out Bibles, praying for people, seeing the Lord do miraculous things. But one, one of the things that we were challenged with is as we were sharing the gospel, people were, were, were smoking pot, doing other drugs. Uh, There's big clouds of pot smoke were going by. It's like, Lord, just deliver me from all that poison and, um, and, and, and drink a beer or whatever. And, and the Lord calls us to go out into that, um, to encounter people where they're at. But he, once people know the gospel, they're not called to stay where they're at, right? Um, and uh, you know, just as Jesus left his grave clothes behind when he was resurrected, right? People are called to leave their old life behind. And, we, and, and by going inside, because it had gotten cold outside, what we discovered is we could then go and invite people who were outside on the streets. We could invite them from being out there in the midst of all that sin and chaos and invite them to someplace warm where we could feed them and come alongside them. And it wasn't just me. There were other brothers, sisters in Christ. The Lord was building this team so we could fulfill what we were called to do, which is Psalm 107, 14, that, that, we, that they could come along, that they could get into the word. They could be led out of darkness and the shadow of death and their chains could be broken away. That Because we're not just called to share the gospel. You know, Jesus says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, and we could get into that discipleship relationship. And so, uh, and so we were, and so what, so the Lord continued just expanding this ministry. Um, and we, we were on the front lines, because our, our ministry is a front line ministry. We, we call ourselves, a, we, we are a front line evangelical ministry. We, the Lord calls us to go to people who are on the edge or over the edge. And when I say that rain, sun, snow, shine, even in the midst of gunfire, the Lord's had us there in all of it. Um, and, and so, but, but the Lord has blessed us, right? Because we're all different members of the body of Christ. And something that the Lord has done is, is they, they put us out there right on the front lines. We've stepped forward in faith and we've encountered people in the name of Jesus right at their very point of need Right? We've been able to pray for people, been able to share the gospel with people, 
we've seen miracles, signs and wonders out there, and, and one of the things that we've been able to do is to connect those people then with brick and mortar ministries, right? Does that make sense? Because we're out on the streets, we do what we can do out on the streets, but as part of the body of Christ, because we can't do it alone, we can connect with those pregnancy resource centers. What's the name of the, the, name of the one here in Lamoille County? Lamoille Valley Pregnancy Resource Center. Bless them. You want to make an eternal difference? That can be the difference between life and death for that child. Bless that ministry, right? The Lord's had us connect actually just recently with multiple pregnant couples. I say couples because it's, <laughs> it's <laughs> uh, and, uh, and, and so the Lord has had us connect with multiple pregnant people recently, and that can make the difference that they might not even know that there's a pregnancy resource center for them to go to. I'm really trying to find my picture of this, of uh, Michael and, there's Michael and Stasha. Um, they might not even know that, uh, just like Michael and Stasha right there, they actually, they thought they were pregnant, they hadn't gotten a pregnancy test yet, and that was just a few weeks ago. Um, and they didn't even know that there was a pregnancy resource center called Aspire Now in Williston, Vermont. And, and, uh, and, and there was another couple that we met, um, and, and I'm just going to share this because it's something of a miracle, um, that we encountered another couple at the transit center in downtown Burlington just, just a couple weeks ago. Um, and, and she was much farther along. So she was like seven months along, uh, obviously pregnant, but you can never assume that with a woman. If you make a mistake <laughs> saying someone's pregnant and she's not, <laughs> that's a big no-no. But <laughs> praise God. But anyway, but, but it turns out she was seven months pregnant. She didn't, uh, she and her boyfriend, fiance, she was very pregnant. Uh, we, we fed them, we blessed them, we prayed for them. But she didn't actually know that there was a pregnancy resource they could turn to. And right there at the bus, at the public bus terminal, the transit center downtown Burlington, I, I get on my phone, I, I, I call the Pregnancy Resource Center um, in, in Williston, and I, I explain that we just met these people, and, and I handed the phone over to this woman, and, um, and, and she took it, and she started talking with them. She was on the phone with this woman for like, you know, this is like my personal cell phone, <laughs> and, and she's on the phone with this person for like a long time, and I'm like, okay, God, uh, you must be doing something. And, um, and, and surely God was. Because what I found out when 20 minutes later when she handed the phone back to me, um, what I found out is that person who was working at Aspire Now, so th this woman that we had met, she shared with me, she had been adopted and she had a biological brother who had been adopted, but they were adopted into different families. Okay? And, um, and, and the person she was speaking on the phone with, the woman, she was the sister of her biological brother, okay? So I don't, I don't know if you call that a half, I don't even know what you call that. But she had actually met her like 10 years before. So this is like this long lost connection that God, God, God had, had prepared and advanced good works for us to do. The Lord connected her in her point of need because she was in crisis at that point in her pregnancy. The Lord connected her with this long lost half-sister, whatever you call that person, uh, but she had a connection with her, and, and they made arrangements for the person at Aspire because they were connected through her biological brother for her to get a ride to bring her to connect her to those pregnancy resources. That is the glory of God. I see God working miracles and signs and wonders. We just have to be obedient to his calling, and, and I saw that God do that. So, so bless the people with this pregnancy center that's here, bless them. Like, God's going to work. He's just going to do amazing things. Like, not just, like, kind of the, the, the normal thing. He's going to just bless. He's going to do things that are amazing and miraculous. And, uh, and so I want to try to finish up here and see where the Lord would have me finish. Uh, uh, so, so, so the, the current form of our group is that Remember I said we were blessed uh, by uh, this uh, New Moon Catering, 150 Cherry Street, blessing us with the food. So we meet on Tuesday mornings. We have the Bible study, breakfast, fellowship, and prayer. 
And then when people come into that, it's not just me, there's other people we can come alongside and walk with them, right? Because oftentimes people come in in crisis, right? And, and, and it's more than what any one person can handle. It's not more than what God can handle, but God, God works through people. And, and so people come into that and, and we get, people get connected to local churches and, um, and we just see God doing amazing things, right? We, and, and so after the group, we have all this leftover food and, and it has, uh, where is my picture? Praise God. We have all this leftover food and how it has uh, worked out is we're, we're given this uh, cart that we pull along and but we have uh, orange juice, milk, coffee, pancakes, bacon and eggs. And make no mistake, we're there in the name of Jesus. There's a, a, a man carrying the, we go there carrying the cross and uh, we, we go out on the streets of Burlington. At this, we, get, we typically get to City Hall Park about noontime on Tuesdays. And, and the Lord has just forged relationships with the people there. Um, every now and then somebody comes in and, and joins the group. But in the meantime, uh, we are encountering, encountering people in the name of Jesus at their point of need. And, and I just see, I, I see these people. They're, they're, they're wandering around like sheep without a shepherd. And, we, and I just, the Lord's given me great compassion for these people. And uh, I just will tell you that uh, uh, they may not always look quite so uh, huggable, but the thing is, when we see people through uh, God's eyes, um, you know, God, God can do mighty works, right? Because when, when God enters a person's life, right, and when they repent, right, when they turn from their sin and toward, turn towards God, confess their sins, ask to be forgiven, um, and pray to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and confess with their mouths Jesus is Lord, and believe in their hearts that God raised him from the dead, that God does miraculous things. Um, there's a man by the name of a Lewis right there. That's just taken just a little over a week ago. And the Lord had us encounter him a year and a half ago. Um, and uh, he went into prison. The church of prison team was, was connected with him. At that point, he just got back out. And for the first time in a long time, he's sober. And I don't know if you can see it in his eyes, but he's sober. That's a miraculous thing. Yes. And, uh, and so I've just, we've had the privilege to just minister uh, and our group has had the privilege to minister to so many people in the name of Jesus. And, uh, and I will uh, say that we, we proclaim the gospel the, uh, the same way, and this is the miraculous part, and I'm going to share this and try to finish up. Uh, we proclaim the gospel the same way that the Apostle Paul did in Romans. Um, I have to look at my verses here. Uh, we proclaim the gospel the same way the Apostle Paul did. And he says that, that he, he fully proclaimed the gospel by word and deed, by the power of signs and wonders, and by the power of the Spirit of God. And that's Romans, oh, my goodness, I guess that's a, a sign that it's time for me to finish. But, uh, but, but, that, but we see God, what we're called to do on our own is to proclaim the gospel by word and deed, right? That's on us. The word, faith comes by hearing, hearing from the word of Christ. And then deed, you know, we're out there feeding people, encountering them in the name of Jesus. But God is the signs and wonders. That's all him. God is the spirit of God, right? And, and we see him just working in and through what we've been doing. We're called to do what we're called to do. And then he does what only he can do. And when we've been so blessed um, to do all these things. You know, uh, the, the Bible, you know, what Jesus tells his disciples in Matthew 10, 7 through 8, he says, the kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely you give. And what I can tell you and bear witness to is that we have seen the Lord working in and through our ministry for every single one of those 
including raising someone from the dead. And our God is a God of miracles. You know this. This is New Beginnings Miracle Fellowship. You know, God didn't stop performing miracles right in the right after Jesus uh, ascended. He continues to this day because he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he is faithful even when we're not. And, we, and I just want to tell you that we have wept with those who have wept. And we have rejoiced with those who have rejoiced. And we have been privileged even to have a group started by a bunch of old guys, me being the youngest one, um, a group started by a bunch of old guys. Um, there was, we've seen a pregnant woman attend our group that's Kirsten through her pregnancy. We didn't know she was pregnant at first, but at some point it became clear. We, we never in a million years thought that there'd be a pregnant woman in our group, but she attended her group when she was a day overdue. She attended our group when she was eight days overdue. I, like, I don't know, I've been, you know, my wife's been pregnant, but I can't imagine attending a Bible study eight days past two. <laughs> but uh, we have just seen God do so many amazing things. And, 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 and just even recently, um, I want to show you a picture of this. Uh, some of you know my son, Sebastian. And Sebastian has Williams Syndrome. Uh, he, he just turned 23 this last week. Um, and I, I just I'll finish up with this, that the Lord is doing signs and wonders and miracles, even for people that you would think that could never be reached. Um, that's my son Sebastian and I on uh, Sunday or Saturday, April 15th, on our way down to North Beach. And I tell you, there was a movement of the Spirit of God, uh, because the Lord, you know, he has us out on the streets, but he has us just encountering people where they're at in the name of Jesus. And, and on Saturday, April 15th, the Lord had me go down. I didn't even get down there until late in the afternoon, because that was the Lord's timing and not mine. And he had me bring, he had me bring that cross up there. That's just a piece of wood. That's just a piece of wood. But it's the message that it carries. And what Jesus says in John 12, 32, I don't know if I can remember this, hallelujah. What, what he says is that he draws, that, that when he is lifted up, he's going to draw all people to himself. And for whatever reason, the beach, North Beach of Down in, in Burlington, Vermont was packed. Now, you talk about a sign and a wonder. On April 15th in Burlington, Vermont, it was 85 degrees, <laughs> and that beach was packed with college students. And, I, and they were just doing what college students do. But the Lord had, had directed me to encounter them where they're at. And they just, they couldn't help it. They came up to that cross. And they just wanted to know about the cross. They're like, why are you carrying the cross? Or one of my favorite things is, they come up to me and confess their sins without even knowing they were confessing their sins. Because they would identify themselves by the sin. And, and it was just like... Do you like go up to somebody and just say, hi, I'm a... <laughs> and, and they, were, they were just going up to the cross because the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to those who are being saved, it's the power of God. God worked a sign, wonders, and miracles on that day through the message of the cross, through our ministry. And there were many college students, this liberal college, the University of Vermont. People repented. They truly repented. These college students repented. They turned from their sin and turned towards God. They confessed their sin. They asked to be forgiven. They prayed to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And they confessed with their mouths Jesus is Lord and believed in their hearts that God raised them from their dead. And what could stop them from being baptized? Hallelujah. 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 And I cannot tell you how many people were came to Christ that day. Um, many people did. Some of them were baptized. That water was ice cold. <laughs> when I came out, my legs were numb. But, but it was explained to them that being baptized represented dying with Christ and what, when we come out of the water, it represents, you know, coming, you know, rising with Christ to a new life. 
and glory to God. God is alive and well Amen. in the state of Vermont. Amen. The spirit of God is moving Hallelujah. with the college students. The spirit of God is moving with the people downtown. The spirit of God, and I tell you, I bear witness to it, is resurrecting people from the dead. He is saving people from drug overdoses. Hallelujah. Yes. People are coming to Christ like never before. And whatever the news media tells you, don't believe it. God is on the throne. Yes. He, Jesus Christ is King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and He is coming again. And that's the message the Lord has for you today. God bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. What time is it? Thank you, Jesus. Sorry, I put a little over. Hallelujah. Uh, thank you. Thank you for being here today. Hallelujah. Do we have the handheld here? Um, this might be in the podium. Oh, in the podium. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Praise God. Let me get through. I don't have some of things here. Praise thank God. you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother Marcus. Hallelujah. Thank you for saying yes. Yes. For saying yes to Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for literally picking up your truck. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. What a blessing. What a blessing to have you here today with us. You know, we've been taught here in this ministry, been trained to recognize the anointing. And, you know, I just want to share that that, um, you know, I recognize the anointing in you. It's what God has called you to, and I so appreciate that. You know, as a pastor, one of the things that we desire, you know, I... God's placed it in our hearts as pastors is that people step into what God has called them to. That they fulfill the purpose and plan that God has for their lives. And it's it's so varied because we're all different. And, you know, he's given us different giftings and talents and we have different experiences. So it's so varied. I mean, I always say the world would be really boring if everybody was like me. It would be. It would be a very boring world. Fortunately, not everybody like me has created us in just so many wonderfully different ways. And he's given us these different giftings and talents, and he's, you know, I just thank the Lord. It does my heart just, it blesses me so much. It, 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 I, just, I just love it when I see people step into what God has called them to do and to walk in it. That's the desire of my heart as a pastor to see that for every single person is that they'll step into the fullness of what God has called them to and never look back. Just walk forward in it and trust in Him and fulfill the purpose and plan that He has for your life. And So I want to say thank you. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for stepping into what God has called you to and saying yes to Him. And I just want to say, you know, I, I'm not on Facebook but my wife is on Facebook, and occasionally I will, you know, <laughs> I'll flip through or scroll, right? So it's called scroll. scrolling, I'll scroll through, I'll scroll through her Facebook. And I just want to share, you know, that in the last couple, few years, you know, we've gone through some real challenging times here, um, you know, as we all have, but as the body of Christ as well. And uh, I just, I want to share that during that time, you know, we hadn't seen you in a while. You hadn't been here in a, you know, a couple few years. Um, and we knew you um, from, you know, that time when you'd come. You know, not, we had, I hadn't personally known you well, but I knew who you were. Um, but during the challenges of the last couple of years, as, you know, occasionally I would stroll through uh, my wife's Facebook, and I don't know how, you know, she ended up being friends with you on, on Facebook, but your posts would be on there. And I would I would see them, and I was just so blessed and encouraged. Um, it, encouraged by <laughs> you stepping out into what God is calling you to do unashamedly for him. And it encourages the body. We're meant to encourage each other in this way. We have to encourage each other. 
And I just want to thank you for that. You know, give, share that with you, that you are encouragement um, to so many, to, to the body. And I, I appreciate that. I, mean, I recognize the anointing, and I thank God for it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Pastor Jody and I, since we had the opportunity to meet with you recently, have you know, kept you in our prayers, and we'll continue to do that, continue to support you. And we just appreciate you, who you are. Thank the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the testimonies that we've heard today. We thank you for all that's to come. We're expectant. We're expectant people. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord, we just, we thank you for your presence. We thank you, Lord, that you're with us. You're always with us. You're always with us. We thank you and praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your love and your mercy and your grace. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's just go our way today.